Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 57. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link directly below the video and scroll way down to the Excel Finance class section. And this is the second workbook for chapter 6. And we need to talk about cash flows for a coupon bond and a zero coupon bond. Who, what company would uh, want to issue a coupon bond and when would they want to issue a zero coupon bond? Looking at the cash flows will help us figure that out. Now here's a situation, a firm needs 10 million bucks. Um, and for simplicity we have the coupon and yield to market at both 11, so it's selling at par, years to maturity, n equals 1, face value for a single bond is a thousand bucks. So before we can uh, look at the cash flow, we just need to figure out how many bonds does each company need to uh, issue. And it's maybe not different companies there. You know, the company saying, should I issue this or this? Well, the first thing is, let's do coupon bond, right? Number of bonds. Well, this one's not too hard, right? If it's selling at par, we just get the exact face value. So I'm going to say uh, the 10 million divided by 1,000, right? So we have to... Uh, issue 10,000 bonds. So I'm going to say uh, total cash coming in and do the reverse here, 10,000 times the face value, and we get 10 million. All right, now for the zero coupon, it's a little bit trickier because what do we have to do first? We have a thousand dollar face value and we need to figure out how much comes in for one bond. So we're going to have to do our present value calculation. The rate, I'm going to do uh, yield to market, and I'm not going to do Usually we do period rate, but it's one for this whole example, so I'm not going to bother. NPER, that's just 20 years. Again, we usually do years times compounding pairs, but we just have one. Uh, the PMT, there is none, so comma, PMT, and then the future value. I'm going to do this from the point of view of the bond issuer, so it's minus that, that amount is coming out of the pocket in the future. All right, so 20 years, right at 11 cent, we 11 percent yield to market. We only get 124, right? So when we amortize this over the 20 years, right, every period we add some, add some, add some until on the last year, this particular one bond equals a thousand. But now the question is, if one bond gives us this, how many do we need to issue? Well, no problem. We just take how much we need divided by this amount. And I'm going to leave it as a decimal. Obviously, if you needed exactly this amount, you'd have to round up, right? Or Because or, you can't get exactly 0 0.2, 0 0.12 bonds. But for this example, I'll leave it just like that. Now, the total, this is how many we need to issue. So the total amount coming in, of course, is that many times this. So th we can see both options are going to give us what we want, 10 million bucks. All right, now let's look at our cash flow out, our coupon and our zero. Well, the coupon we know is going to be uh, regular payments, the regular coupon. So I'm going to say minus the original face times the coupon rate. And we're not going to, we have one period per year, so we can just do that calculation. And then at the end, I'm going to say negative this one. What about here for the zero? There aren't any coupons. I'm going to put a zero there. What about at the end, right? Equals, well, how many bonds do they issue? Oh, this many right here times, and what's the face value at the end? A thousand bucks. And I'm going to put a negative here. So just from here, we can see paying a lot of cash out early, not so much at the end here. It's all out at the end. Let's look at a picture over here. So you could see for the interest only, um, we have this million one hundred dollar payment, uh, coupon payment every period, and then finally ten million at the end, eighty million here, one huge gigantic lump sum. Now let's add it all up and see what the total is. Well, we have a uh, million one point one million per period for twenty periods. And then we can add equals SUM, those two. So all of the interest paid, all of the principal, 
and we see negative 32 million bucks. But uh, what about here? Oh, that's just this. So now we can compare a little bit better. We saw the cash flow patterns. Here, clearly, they are paying, you know, what, f almost $50,000 more interest. Now, here's the deal. If you have a use for this cash, or really, this company says, I want to conserve the cash, and I don't want to pay it out till the end. Well, if you're putting the, those funds to good uses and earning a, a good return, no problem. Then you can afford the, the more interest. But if you're not, you have uh, the cash early on to pay back in regular intervals, then this um, coupon bond is uh, what you want to do. So it's a, about cash flows and whether you can uh, want to conserve your cash flows or not. Whether you have a good use in the early years and you don't mind paying the extra interest. All right, and we can see here the difference is huge. Now, the couple important points. Actually, the present value we saw is the same, but actually, if you do the future value calculation, which I'm not going to do here, I did it over here. Uh, for these two options, given um, our assumptions, the future value and present values is exactly the same. The timing of the cash flows is just different. This option, meaning uh, the interest only or coupon, implies that the company has the cash to pay early. This option implies the company has the lack of cash to pay back until the very end. This option, meaning the coupon bond, requires the company pay back sooner and thus will pay much less interest. This option allows the company to use the cash to earn a return on the cash it borrowed early, but it must pay much, much more interest back at the end. All right, um, let's look at one last aspect, the cash flow with our interest expense and tax advantage. We actually talked about this in our last video, but just we only talked about the um, zero bond and not in comparison coupon and zero. Well, first period actual interest. This is uh, paid out. This is cash out, right? So equals, and I'm going to put a minus sign, this uh, payment right here. I'm going to click right there. Right, but we know that if you pay out an interest expense, you actually get to record this as a deduction. So anytime $1 is included as a deduction, you save 35 cents out. And that means you save, a deduction allows you to avoid paying taxes. So we have 1.1 million. We just multiply it by our tax rate. And that tells us our tax. This is the amount of tax saved. And anytime you can save on taxes, that is as if cash is coming in. So the actual cash flow out, say this is our saving, this is in. But our actual tax out is going to be, that's all the cash we paid out, minus the benefit we had on our tax return. Now that's our uh, cash flow out. But there's another way to do this calculation. And anytime you have a deduction, that's the full expense recorded on your tax return. And you want to know the cash flow because there's an advantage to a deduction, which means we're avoiding paying taxes. You simply take the deduction times 1 minus the tax rate. Whoops. And we'll get the same thing. For every $1, we subtract um, our advantage, that 35 cents, and boom. So 715. Now, what about the zero? Remember, here we actually, this actual cash went out. This was actually the benefit we had from recording as a deduction, right? So the difference is that. But over here, guess what? For in this particular case, we have you know, issued coupon and zero. So we have to amortize this. And we actually saw in our last video, 56, I think it was, um, how to create an amortization table for a zero. But guess what? This amount is in, and it's going to grow over time to this 80,000. We are going to use, come down here, we're going to use our same uh, calculation here. Equals the full amount in our count times, and actually we have to use our yield to market for a zero, but it's exactly the same. And guess what? It's exactly the same. But there's no cash moving here. With a coupon bond, this cash went out to the bondholders, 
we got our little benefit here, but there's no cash for the zero. You still get to record it, <laughs> and then you get to go like this. Time, so what, what, you're recording a non-cash expense on your tax return? And that means we're saving, you know, 35 cents for every one dollar we just deducted if that's your marginal tax rate? Guess what? This is as if there's a cash flow in. That is the benefit. And that is just as we saw in the last video, that for a non-cash expense like this, if you get to deduct it, it's as if there's cash coming in because you avoided paying taxes. So now we can see another clear advantage. Up here we saw, you know, the huge difference in interest, right? But it was all about the cash flows. Um, these, this option means you need to conserve cash early. But look at this. There's a further benefit. There's a cash flow in from our tax benefit. There's also a tax benefit here also. But here, th there's still some going out. That's why it's red. Here, it's all coming in in terms of a tax saving. All right, um, that was a little bit about uh, zero bonds and coupon bonds. Uh, our next chapter, chapter 7, we'll start talking about uh, valuing stocks. All right, see you next video.